Hey race fans, I'm Anthony Damcott. He is Mark Crystal. We're here at Michigan International Speedway for post-race conversations after the Cabo Wabo 250. Boy, that's a fun name to say. Uh, Justin Allgaier uh, took the win. A um, lot to dissect here in this race, Mark. A uh, lot of stuff that went on. Uh, first things first, we had a lot of rain today. Uh, well, I shouldn't say a lot of rain. We had a lot of rain uh, stoppages um, throughout the afternoon. Uh, cup practice and qualifying obviously canceled as well. Um, weather played in, played a role in the finish of the race, obviously, having the uh, having the red flag for a little bit before we went back green in overtime. Um, what do you make of the finish? And, and, and with Mother Nature, who do you think, uh, besides Justin Allgaier, obviously, who do you think stood out among the rest? You know, I, as Brad Keselowski said in his presser earlier today, if he would have looked at the radar in the beginning of the week, it would have been a monsoon, and there's no way we'd have gotten in the Arctic race yesterday and the Xfinity race today. So first of all, we're fortunate that we've got both races in both days. As far as today, obviously Justin Allgaier took home the checker. Otherwise, Anthony Alfredo, really good run for him. Uh, I know that he said in an interview I did earlier with him, earlier this year, that tracks like Michigan, Daytona, Atlanta, kind of help him and his team hit above their weight class because of the draft and the equalizer and all those types of things. Matt DiBenedetto, who is, I was looking it up, he's becoming quite a super speedway, uh, really good at super speedways. Cesar Baccarella, really good run for him with Alpha Prime. If you're going with Alpha Prime, two top 15s with Ryan Ellis as well. So uh, good run for there. The other driver who last lap notwithstanding was really good and who I think is a name to be keeping an eye on is Carson Quapel. He was leading, his pit strategy didn't work, but if they would have gone into more overtimes and more drivers were to burn out of fuel, who knows what would have happened. Uh, but those were the drivers that stood out to me. And then we have the cup drivers who came down and played and shockingly, they hit good runs, the cup drivers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Noah Gregson in particular. I know he's not an underdog, but that team, Red Jones Racing, uh, late models, ARCA, do a lot of grassroots racing to come up here with a part-time Xfinity schedule with Noah Gregson and finish uh, fifth. Although Gregson believes they may have been scored sixth. Um, to, to finish in it as well as they did was uh, a good run for that team. Um, it certainly gives Noah a lot of confidence tomorrow. Another driver who stood out for the wrong reasons was uh, Kyle Sieg, uh, who had a wild ride on the final lap. Big crash involving said Carson Quapple. Um, that saw him going upside down heading into turn three. Um, Mark, I know you talked to Kyle in the infield care center. Um, I mean, that would be, that a crash like that, when you go upside down, it's good enough to, to scare anybody, but I'm sure uh, Kyle Seagum, pretty sure this is his first time upside down, so probably was a, a, big, a big scare for him. Yeah, he was pretty shook it up. I think he said he had a, I had to double check the audit, but I think he said he was a little sore, uh, but if anything else, it just scared, scared him, which, I don't know if it's my personal vehicle. I don't know about you. I'd be scared to death as well. Uh, he did say he closed his eyes. Bob Pockers asked him, because you often hear stories when a driver flips, they say kind of everything goes silent for a moment. And he pretty much just said he kind of closed his eyes, like this is not going to end well. And fortunately, the car did land wheels down, so not on the roof, because that could have been far worse of a situation. In the replay, it didn't look like the roof flaps deployed. He wasn't sure because, as he said, it all happened so quickly that he couldn't tell. Uh, they were did, checking out the roof flaps in the garage. Yeah, so. NASCAR officials were checking it out. So, you know, if if the roof flaps didn't deploy, maybe we find something where either we fix the rule or whatever because Michigan is not, you, when you think of flips in a racetrack, you think of Daytona, Atlanta, Talladega. Michigan generally just qualifies one of those tracks, so glad that he is okay. Uh, you and I were standing on the start finish, right by the start finish there, and you knew something was going on when you heard cars slowing down, the caution lights come on, and the crowd get really loud, and then you didn't, see, and then you saw Carson Quapel's car come down with pretty significant damage. Same so, with Chandler Smith. Yes, him too. So. Glad everybody's okay, um, and you know, I, Kyle said that you know they would kind of see from there because I imagine with any hit like that you'd be sore, um, and you know hopefully I would expect he will be at the Xfinity race at Daytona next week, but at the same token, 
props to him because if he like for competing in that because after flipping I'm not sure I'd want to get in a race car and go that fast to get on a track that can be known for flips. Yeah, it certainly next week will be a, a challenge for them and then of course um, you know you, you ex I, I don't I don't want to say you expect to go upside down at Daytona, but like you said, Michigan is not a track that you that you expect to be upside down and, and um, obviously nobody expected anybody to be upside down. Um, especially because you know we the aforementioned rain you know had the race stopped with two to go we're going into overtime there were talks of maybe just ending the race i mean obviously with two laps to go it was almost like hey what's the point but credit to nascar uh we got a full finish uh, couldn't get a green flag finish but unlike some past races like at uh in, i think back to the cup race at indianapolis um i think this this was very much a a race that we were glad to see end under caution after we saw the 28 uh on his on his lid um so moving on from that um again fortunately glad the house he's okay but uh, one of the bigger stories of the afternoon was uh this package uh they ran a super speedway package um just like they did at indy um and i think a lot of people um whether that be fans drivers media nascar themselves social so, media too. social media i think you know they saw the finish at, at, at at Indy with Riley Herbst and Eric Almirola and Cole Custer and thought that maybe they could replicate that here at Michigan seemed to uh, not be the case a lot of a uh, lot of train racing a lot of uh, a lot of fuel savings seem to, you know when you get that speedway package it seems like fuel mileage is always at play uh, Mark what do you think what do you think about this package I've covered what uh, several races here as a meeting number and one of the things that I noticed pretty quickly was that in the first maybe five laps of the green flag run, there was only like two or three top top instances where it was side by side racing, and that was different from any other Xfinity race that I've seen here. Uh, some more visual that was obvious. As far as a quality, I personally wasn't a fan. Now we don't work for NASCAR, but we are front stretch. Now Matt Benedetto did say that you know, race car drivers are always going to go faster, and that's the thing. He credited NASA, he did acknowledge that the Indy race was really good, so let's try it at Michigan, maybe we'll get something special. Um, at the same token, as he said, based on today's race, even though he came out with a top 10, he still would like to see more horsepower. Um, it remains to be seen what the decision will be, but I know in practice yesterday, Xfinity cars were going I believe it was two and two and a half seconds. They were going slower than the ARCA cars, and some of the ARCA drivers were finding humorous that, using a baseball metaphor, Class A is faster than Double A. That is generally not <laughs> how the mindset is supposed to go. So we'll have to see. Um, personally, I didn't think it was anything to keep in the future, but at the same token, no credit to for NASCAR of you know, Michigan that I remember Parents said season tickets here. Michigan in the 90s was very much a fuel strategy, follow the leader type race. So credit to NASCA for trying new ways to make Michigan exciting to get it where it's an exciting race for the fans because the manufacturers already love it. Yeah, and I, I think um, Sheldon Creed had told me, um, you know, he won the poll yesterday, right. and they had gone, I believe, uh, 18 miles an hour below uh, the speed of pole winner last year. and. Wow. Um, he, he had said that they might need to tweak this package for uh, Atlanta. Speaking of Sheldon Creed, um, unfortunately another runner-up finish for him. He now owns the record for most uh, second place finishes without a win, um, without a first win, um, breaking that tie with uh, Dale Jarrett and Daniel Hemrick. Um, so not a record you want to have, but uh, obviously I believe um, I th he's confident he can get to victory lane. Um, if not now, next year, because obviously the big news, him and Sam Mayer going to the uh, Haas Factory Team Xfinity program full-time next year. I'm um, excited to see what they can do there. Um, that's going to do it for us, but first, let's preview the cup race tomorrow because we got some limited track time today because that most of the weather we've got, unfortunately, was during practice and qualifying. Uh, so the question becomes, you know, I, it's sort of an unknown for, for tomorrow. They did get some laps in. Um, but the, it's kind of a big question mark going into tomorrow. What do you think we're going to see? First of all, the radar, like all weekend, the radar looks, depends on what time you're checking it and what website you're using, but the radar looks like we could be either washed out or we could get parts up tomorrow in. So we'll see. Ford is very good here. So, you know, uh, I think it was Brad Kislowski said, you know, they need to continue 
it that way, but we'll see what happens. I feel like in many ways this is an unknown, and hopefully that's exciting. Yeah, um, the air conditioning fan came on behind, so I think that's our cue to uh, get on out of here. Um, so that's going to do it for us for tonight. We'll be back here tomorrow for Fire Keepers Casino 400. It's going to be a great day. If it was anything like the finish of today, it's going to be a wild one. Uh, we'll see you bright and early tomorrow. Be sure to subscribe to the Front Stretch Family Networks. That includes Front Stretch, Front Stretch Grassroots, and Front Stretch Open Wheel on YouTube. Follow Front Stretch on Twitter at Front Stretch. Uh, you can follow Mark. Mark, where can they find you on Twitter? Uh, that would be at Mark, my last name, A R I S T O. And then you can find me at Anthony Damcott on Twitter. For Mark Crystal, I'm Anthony Damcott. We will see you tomorrow for another great day of racing here at Michigan International Speedway. Jared Haas with FrenchStretch.com. Come back soon for more great racing videos. And if you like us, make sure to hit that subscribe button.